Welcome to Gearheads. Today we dive under the hood into the world of oil catch cans. We're going to discuss the two most popular types of catch cans, vented and sealed, the pros and cons of both, which I'm choosing for my LS powered 55 Chevy truck build behind me, and why. So stick around to find out which type of catch can is right for your ride. What's up YouTube and welcome back to In The Shop TV. On the last episode, we finally got our 6.0 LS fired up and running for the first time. We've been working on this truck for about a year and a half and getting that thing running was just a huge milestone for me. What led me down this road was choosing to put an oil catch can on my vehicle was when I first started breaking this engine down to rebuild, I took the intake off and it was full of oil. While that's somewhat normal for this type of engine, it kind of pegged my OCD meter like right through the roof. So let's just jump right into this. The first thing I wanna do is talk about the two most popular types of catch cans. And what we're gonna to do to illustrate that is let's take them both apart and see how they're different. So guys, what I have right here is probably the most popular catch can that you will find out there. It is on Amazon, I believe, for like 29 bucks or something like that. It's kind of versatile in that it's current configuration. Um, it's acting as a sealed catch can but that can easily be changed by removing this top block off plug here and then adding on the included breather. They even give you this cute little dipstick here on top that you unscrew to check the amount of oil that you collected. It's a little bit closer look and you can see that there's an inlet on one side and an outlet on the other. So let's take it apart and take a look inside. So in here is just basically your empty cup. Here we can see that there is a difference between the inlet and the outlet. One has this kind of screen protector that is the inlet where you're Line's going to come in. They're going to use this kind of, you know, perforated screen to separate the vapor um, from any oil particulates that's in it, leaving the oil to fall into the can and the vapor to escape out of the outlet. So a real common example of how you would run something like this would be taking a line or teeing a line off of your valve covers and plumbing them into the inlet of this catch can. It would then do its thing inside and then you would take a line coming out of the catch can and plumb that right into the vacuum port that you often find on your throttle body or your intake. The advantage to a sealed can like this is that you will take your crankcase ventilation in here. You will filter out some of the particulates of oil in here before returning that vapor back to your engine. The disadvantage to a can like this is that you are returning some of that oil vapor back into your engine and not filtering out all of it. Now, in truth, that's totally normal, and this is a perfectly fine setup and will work just great for just about all the street vehicles out there. Just remember, with this in and out configuration, it has to be plumbed back to the engine to keep that scavenging vacuum effect going so that you can pull crankcase ventilation out of the engine effectively. Hey, look at that. How are you talking? And here we have a vented catch can. This is a really nice design called a top loader by the good people at Motion Raceworks. So remember with the sealed can, we take some of that crankcase pressure and return it back to the intake or throttle body. With the vented can, we're taking all of that crankcase pressure and ventilating it to atmosphere. The advantage to a vented catch can like this would be especially useful to people that are running either boost or have a high horsepower application that build up excessive crankcase pressure. So in my case, I have a pretty mild stock engine. From the factory, this is 364 horsepower. Maybe we'll squeeze a few more out with the cold air intake and the headers in the right tune. But by all intents and purposes, it still is a mild street engine. So from my usage, the sealed catch can would probably be the way to go for this. But I'm not gonna do that. Remember when this video started, I told you when I broke this engine down and I took the intake off, um, the intake was just full of oil. And when I say full of oil, I mean there's probably a good two ounces, maybe three ounces of engine oil sitting at the bottom of that intake. I mean, the thing ran just fine like that. I guess there's nothing wrong with it. That's how the factory designed it. But like I said, my OCD meter pegged all the way and I don't know, man, I just don't want all that oil sitting in my intake. So why did I choose the Motion Raceworks catch can? Well, because it comes with candy in the box, obviously. No, seriously though, I went searching for a catch can that had a dual inlet design so I could take a line off of each valve cover, route it to a catch can that blows out the atmosphere and gets rid of all of that crankcase pressure and ventilates it, who knows where, not back in my engine. So I've got this can opened up for you guys and here you can see both inlets coming out the same place, which is well baffled. They hit down here with that screen, knocks the oil out of separation, hits another baffle on the way out to where your ventilated breather cap is. Now a big con to this type of vented catch can is that all of that crankcase ventilation is going to escape your breather over here and it's gonna kind of enter your engine bay or wherever you have this mounted uh, in the form of steam or what looks like smoke. 
In a normal healthy operating engine, it shouldn't be a terribly large amount of vapor or steam coming out of there. And I could totally understand seeing some steam in your engine bay not being for everybody. So one question that I see a lot of people are asking about catch cans is where do I mount it? Well, the simple and truthful answer to that is wherever you have space, it doesn't really matter. There are some things to think about though, especially in the case of a vented catch can like this one. We talked about steam coming out of these vented catch cans and such. You may wanna not consider mounting this someplace close to the cab or cabin, whatever type of vehicle you're driving. Like a firewall, I see some people mount on firewalls. You can if it doesn't bother you, but you kind of run the risk of having some of that vapor and steam enter the cabin. So on our build, we have our coolant overflow right here, and we're going to mount it on the opposite side of the radiator, on that side of the radiator core support. Now this particular catch can came with dual 10AN ports, which makes a lot of sense because remember I said, typically vented catch cans really work good for high horsepower or boosted applications. Therefore you'd want the biggest inlets you could possibly have to scavenge as much of that crankcase ventilation out of here as possible. In my case, again, this is a stock build. So what we're gonna do is we just stepped it down to 6AN, which is gonna be more than enough for us. So I've got these two lines just kind of laying here that um, I have zip tied for the time being and they're coming off of the ports on each valve cover. I'm gonna thread on our fittings first so we get a more accurate idea of how short our hose needs to be because uh, y'all know I like my hose to be short. It's a middle-aged dad joke, I'm allowed to do those things. So we've got our ends cut nice and square. So I just keep a little cap full of silicone grease laying around uh, for stuff like this and I just kind of coat the ends of these with it just to make it a little bit easier to push them in. So I think I'm gonna probably cut these zip ties off because um, I have some like decorative hose separators that I'm gonna put on here and see how that looks. And uh, you know, I like to keep my hose separated. <laughs> it's so stupid, I made myself laugh. Real quick before I get those put on there, I wanted to ask you guys what you think about doing live videos. I had made a post yesterday on YouTube asking what people think about it. And um, I didn't get very many replies. I don't think YouTube posts reach the same amount of audience that the videos do. So I think like only eight people replied or something like that. But um, do you guys wanna see live videos? Would you be interested in like maybe once a week or once a month? We hang out here in the shop, go over things, ask questions. If you guys have tips and tricks that you wanna share with other viewers and stuff like that, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe we could even just, you know, crack a beer, hang out and shoot the shit about cars. That'd be awesome too. I'd be into that, um, but I don't wanna waste my time or yours if you guys aren't into an idea like that. So be honest with me, leave in the comments um, if you guys are interested in something like that. And if you're not, you can say that too. So I'm not gonna be offended at all. Just let me know. I don't know, what do you guys think? Sometimes an engine bay can be kind of a boring place and sometimes it's just a little details that help set it off a little bit. So another thing that I almost forgot to mention that's really important, if you're gonna run a vented catch can like this where your um, crankcase pressure ventilates the atmosphere, you really need to check your local laws and rules and all that and regs because some places don't want you doing that so you really gotta be careful and check it out um, or don't, but you know, that's my disclaimer. I'm certainly not here to judge anyone but I just thought I should put that out there so you guys know.
All right, so we'll get this thing fired up in a second. And if all is ventilating properly, we should see some steam coming out of that breather cap right there. So I put the fan on, you can kind of see it sucking that steam or smoke vapor down out of there into the fan. No, I'm not throwing that. That's not that's not a stick. That's a boy. Bailey, get a bigger stick. Come on, not nuggets. Mia, get a big stick. Get a big one. So should you guys run a vented catch can like we have here? Remember we talked about the cons of these things, and you're gonna have some of that steam vapor coming out of here, as you guys saw in that clip. Um you know, it kind of smells a little bit like oil or gas, or whatever. So that is definitely something to consider. And um, it might wind up bothering you. It might actually end up bothering me down the road. I don't know. But you got to kind of weigh the pros and cons of this thing. If you want to have a catch can where you take the crankcase ventilation out of the engine, process it through the baffles of the catch can, and then route it back into the intake, there is nothing wrong with that. You can totally do that. That's the entire purpose of a sealed catch can is to do exactly that. Um, again, this is suiting me and my OCD-ness because I don't want to put anything back in my intake. But that's just me being ridiculous. That doesn't mean that's the law. You have to live by that. So anyway, guys, I hope you learned a little bit about catch cans today and what's right for you and for your vehicle or if you need one or if you don't at all. Well, if you guys made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you sticking around and watching. I hope you guys consider hitting that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you in the shop.